Well, good morning and welcome to worship this morning. We are glad that you're joining us and it's good to be back in the sanctuary. Uh, Special thanks to the AVL team, which are the only other people here in the sanctuary um, listening to this on a Wednesday night, but we're recording here with our new cameras and everything and uh, it is great and we are happy to be here. Uh, If you'll notice, I'm going to put up another image of what the old cameras look like so you can kind of see a difference between what it is now looking at me being recorded and then what it would have looked like in in the past before these new HD cameras. So thank you to the Thigpen Trust, which uh, graciously gave us money to be able to upgrade this equipment so we can do this uh, like this now. A couple of announcements on Sunday, September 13th. So next Sunday at 7 p.m., we're going to have some baptisms and have the confirmation class join uh, the church. It's going to be out in the large field on the other side of the parsonage. So please bring a mask and a chair. And if you'd like to uh, bring one of the canopies to sit under in case there's not shade, feel free to do that as well. But uh, come out there at 7 o'clock. We'll start. But we do need you to RSVP. We are going to have communion, so we want to make sure that we are having enough communion for everybody. So please email Blake by Friday at 1 o'clock and let her know if you will be attending. We're also excited about a new ministry that is starting. It is, uh, yes, even in the midst of the pandemic, we are starting something new. It's an interactive worship experience, which has some very, um, started over in England and has come over to the U.S., and we're excited that it's joining us here at Milford Hills. It is interactive, it's an experiential uh, means of learning Bible stories through crafts, food, and fellowship, and stories, and we're excited to launch our first Messy Church, which is what it's called, and it'll happen once a month on the third uh, Sunday of this month. So it'll be on YouTube, and it'll be a video, but hopefully you will go out there, share it with friends, and experience Messy Church, our very first one. Well, we have a mission here at Milford Hills United Methodist Church, which is a driving force behind everything that we do. And our mission here is to love, serve, and live as Christ. And that begins here in worship. So let us open up worship and prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we come this day to worship and thank you for the many ways you guide our lives. We ask that our hearts, our ears, and our spirits may be open to your healing word of love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God will take care of you. 
We now enter a time of prayer with God this morning. And there are a few people from our congregation and our extended congregation family that we'd like to lift up in prayer this morning. We lift up the family of Carol West, the family of Dick Polson, the family of Bonnie Graham, the family of Carol White. We pray for Doug Jones and Linda Tuttero, Sue Veen, Bill Douglas, Glenda Christie, June and Ray Scott. And now that we're back in the sanctuary, one of the things that I'm excited about is that we do have prayer cushions now down at the prayer rail. And we want to do the prayer of the people down, down there kneeling. And we long for the day that we'll be able to invite you to come and kneel with us during this time of our worship. But for now, as I transition from the lectern down to the prayer rail, I just simply invite you to have a moment of silence or to lift up people who weigh heavy on your hearts this morning. So let's go to God now in prayer. Forgiving and loving God, our hearts are filled today with pain and concern for the future of humankind. Words of anger assail our airways. We cannot escape from the threats that are being thrown out. In our fear, we cry out, where are you, O Lord? We wander around in the darkness of the Spirit, seeking light and hope. Forgive us when we forget that you are always with us throughout times of peace and times of war and times of struggle and times of sacrifice in times of pain and in times of rest in times of conflict and in times of reconciliation heal our souls O Lord help us to reach out to others with the assurance of your love and presence help us to be the tools of your grace and love for this hurting world May we continue to live into the three simple rules the founder of our denomination teaches us. To first do no harm, to do good, and to live by the ordinances of God. May our lives reflect these three things in all that we do, whether it's simply going to the store or imagining a new ministry within a pandemic. No matter what we are going through, the loss of a loved one, the frustration of our current culture, the reality of the pain of our neighbors who are seen differently by the world because of the color of their skin, or the struggle of the world fighting against a virus. We thank you for who you are. You are our protector. May we take steps in our lives to move closer to you and to deepen our relationship with you. May we move into your presence. One way we do that is to pray the prayer that your son taught us to pray. We say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hello, everyone. It's time for a story. A long time ago, before all this pandemic mess, Mr. Dustin, the music director, walked into the church conference room. On the table, he saw a huge cake. It looked delicious, and he was sure it had been made by one of the church's many talented bakers as a gift for the staff to share. I'll just wait until everyone else gets here. That way we can all share the cake together. At that moment, Dustin's stomach growled. He was very hungry, and the cake looked so rich. He wanted to go ahead and eat some. An evil spirit of temptation suddenly appeared and whispered in his ear, It's okay. Go ahead and eat. The others won't even miss it. Doesn't it look so tasty? Dustin was about to reach out and take a huge bite when he came to his senses. No, this cake is for us all to share. I will just have to wait. 
Then he noticed an open Bible at the end of the table. It was open to Psalm 121. He began to read, I will lift my eyes unto the hills, from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He then knelt to pray, Dear God, whenever I am tempted and I need help, let me remember to pray and ask for help from you. Thank you for protecting me from temptation and evil. Amen. Then Pastor Jim, Pastor Kelly, and Blake entered the conference room. They were delighted to see the giant cake. Together, the staff all shared the cake and had a wonderful day. The End We now enter a time of offering by giving our offerings to God today, and we thank you for your generous gifts so far this year and for the uh, firm foundation that you have given us as a congregation. So we thank you for giving through all the different ways, and you can find all those ways at milfordhillsumc.org slash give. But now let us turn our hearts and the giving of our tithes, gifts, and offerings to God.
Let us bless our offerings now. Let us pray. Holy God of mercy, redemption and grace, this morning we bring you gifts and pray that you will dedicate them to your work of love and reconnection with all your children. These gifts seem small when balanced against what Christ has given us and, when, and what you continue to give us through the Holy Spirit. In our giving, may we grow in gratitude, trust, and faithfulness. In Christ's name we pray all of this. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Psalm 121. I lift my eyes up to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who made the heavens and the earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Guide us, O oh God, by your word and Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see truth and find freedom, and in you will discover peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. So these are some of the better known and uh, more comforting verses of the Psalms. There have been times in my career as a minister that I have shared these verses in a hospital with someone who is ill or maybe with somebody who was emotionally struggling. And it's comforting for us to think about looking up to the hills and acknowledging God's presence. Here in North Carolina, looking up to the hills for us means peace. We think of the mist and mountains and cool weather. It's an escape for us. It brings to mind Julie Andrews and the sound of music, dancing and singing on the mountaintops of Austria. The hills are alive with the sound of music. However, to those in the past, these verses meant something a bit different. You see, they had a very different perspective on what it meant to look upon them, their hills. Around 1000 BC to 400 BC, ancient Jewish pilgrims would read, sing, or recite a certain selection of psalms as they gathered and marched together for the three major Jewish festivals in Jerusalem. These are called the Psalms of Ascent, and they're also sometimes called the Gradual Psalms, Songs of Decrees, Songs of Steps, Songs for Going Up to Worship, 
or the Pilgrim Songs. And there are only 15 of these psalms, and they span from Psalm 120 to Psalm 134. And today we're looking at the second psalm in that collection, Psalm 121. And in the future weeks, um, we'll be looking at others as we journey together, up and up, into God's presence. So faithful Jews three times a year would travel to Jerusalem to celebrate the festivals of Passover, Weeks, and Tabernacles, and to visit the temple in Jerusalem because that's where the presence of God resided for the Jews. This is what all faithful Jews would do back then. And considering the geography of that area, Jerusalem is actually at one of the highest geographical locations in all of Israel. It is literally a city on a hill with the temple in the center of that city. And so they would gather and they would sing these songs together as they marched up to the temple. But this march wasn't easy or carefree. It wouldn't be like a hike in our beautiful mountains. The roads leading to Jerusalem were treacherous. There were thieves and robbers and storms and idol worship all along the way. If you read much of the Old Testament, you may come across a passage that talks about high places. This is where their neighbors built shrines to worship idols like Baal, Asherah, and Molech. These false gods were idols crafted from wood or stone. So imagine on your walk up the hill to worship God, you come across all of these different folks worshiping idols. And on the surface, that doesn't sound maybe so bad or tempting, but there were elements of the worship of the false gods that could potentially be really attractive to travelers. There was a practice of temple prostitution. And the temple prostitutes would hang out at these shrines and it was said that if you had sex with these prostitutes, it would not only guarantee the fertility of your family, but also your crops and your livestock. That could be pretty tempting, especially maybe for a young Jewish male. Going up into God's presence wasn't a cakewalk for the Jewish people. God had told the people what he required. God had handed down the Torah, the law, to them. So they knew that they were expected to have no other gods, no graven images, no adultery. Going on the up and up with all of these things along the way, the temptation for them to sin and separate themselves from God was a real threat. When they looked up to the hills, they didn't see peace and serenity. They saw something intimidating and alluring. It was a minefield of lies. And what about us? What do we face when we go out into the world? What do we see? Are we also facing intimidating and tempting hills? Whether your life is headed on the up and up or on the down and down, in this culture, are we not surrounded by lies and temptations? And the most dangerous lies are the ones disguised as love. The temple prostitutes were full of promises, lies disguised as love, but that's what these dangerous lies do. They overpromise and underdeliver on what love truly is. For example, the world tells us if you're not happy with your spouse, if they can't give you what you need or what you want, maybe stepping out and finding someone else will. The thrill of an affair is a lie being told to you disguised as love. We can't buy into these kind of lies. The Jewish people lifted their eyes up to the hills and this is what they saw. And it was scary. And so they ask, where does my help come from? Baal, Molech, Asherah, 
No. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, the one who makes, not the one who is made. Here's a little weird fact I learned about uh, the false god Baal. So he was famous for sleeping a lot, which I feel like was really strange for uh, a supposed god of fertility and war. He was just really sleepy and slept a whole lot. Um, And there's a great story in the Bible about the prophet Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 18 confronting the priests of Baal. Elijah boldly challenges all of these prophets of Baal, the Bible says there's about 450 of them. And the Bible says um, that Elijah was the only prophet left representing the true God of Israel at that time. And so they have like this contest on the top of Mount Carmel where they build altars. They build one altar to Baal and one altar to the God of Israel. And they each call on their God respectively to see if their God can set that altar ablaze with flames, and they want to see which one responds. And of course, no matter how many times the prophets of Baal call out, they receive no answer. Maybe Baal was napping. I don't know. (laughs) No, it, it became so obvious that Baal was a false god. All Elijah had to do was call on the name of the one and only true God of Israel, and bam, fire ignited the altar that he had built. So just like in 1 Kings chapter 18, I think we shouldn't only think about Psalm 121 as a comforting piece of scripture that gives us all the warm and fuzzies, like when we drink a nice steamy cup of hot chocolate. This is another idol smackdown. The one who watches over you will not slumber and never sleeps. That's in verses 3 and 4. This is a psalm that is comparing the lies of those false gods to the truth of the God of Israel. God is distinguishing himself from all of the idols that surround the people. In verse 6, it talks about the sun and the moon. They were also worshipped in Canaanite culture. But God says, no, they will not harm you. You know why? Because they serve at my pleasure. They are my creation. The false gods in all of the stories about them, they only cared about what they wanted and about themselves. But the true God of Israel cares about you and your life and watches over you as you come and as you go now and forever. The Jewish people were being served up a bunch of lies from the surrounding culture, but God was smacking those lies down. Smack down and rebuke. I love it. It's like watching a WWE match. God, as our protector, seeks to illuminate or shine a light on the lives of the world so that we can see them for what they really are. God reveals to us and tells us who God is, and that in turn helps us to combat the culture of lies we live in. We need to be constantly turning to God and spending time with God so that we can get really good at recognizing deception, temptation, and sin. And if we do mess up and stumble, we still need to be turning back to God because God loves and cares for us so much and will offer forgiveness. God seeks to love us through honest correction and even protects us from ourselves. We need protection from ourselves sometimes. Verses 7 and 8 tells us that God watches over us. But this word watches here means more than simply to observe. The Hebrew word here is shamar, which means to tend, to preserve, to protect, to keep charge of, or to guard. It's like how a shepherd cares for his flock. God is our protector. Now, this does not mean that you will not have harm or some bad things come to you in this life. We've all experienced pain and grief and suffering. 
But this does mean that none of these things can separate us from God's love. God's love will always be available to us. The Apostle Paul reaffirms this in the New Testament, uh, Romans chapter 8, and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries for tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love, no power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all of creation. And thanks be to God for that. Thanks be to God that he is a maker and that he is not made. That we have a God who is the one and only true God who loves us infinitely. And thanks be to God for the now and forever protection that comes from on high. So are you ready to travel on the up and up with us? being ready to trust in our God, the protector, who is with us and is our help in times of trouble as we head out into a dangerous world. Let's read again together Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who made the heavens and the earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. So let's go up to worship in God's presence together. And all God's people said, Amen. Let us pray. Holy Lord, you are our help in times of trouble. You are the one who guides us and protects us from temptation. We are so thankful for your watchful eye that you keep on our lives. Continue to watch over us as we journey continuously back to you. Sometimes the hills may be high and difficult, but we know that you help us along the way. We are grateful for the God you are the God who never sleeps, the God who is creator, and the God who loves. In your holy name, we do pray. Amen. And now hear this benediction. Our help comes from God, the creator of heaven and earth. So go now from here with peace and with confidence because you do not go alone. Amen. Speed of time.